Today I'm building a Hydra Stomper from Marvel's What If. For this build, I used craft foam, floor mat foam, half cylinder foam, EVA foam dowels, coffee foam, putty, super glue, hot glue, contact cement, gray plastidip, cardboard tubes of varying diameter, a cardboard box, sanding tools, safety gear, scissors, razor pens, and a box cutter. First, I started with the cardboard box. This is going to be the basic internal framework, just for stability. Now, admittedly, this is not a very durable structure, and to that end a lot of this is gonna be cut away when I'm done but for right now I need it to hold the foam in place while I'm working kind of like a reverse one two three block so first I taped it closed then I cut scrap pieces of foam floor mat into curved pieces after that I hot glued them to one of the sides of the box I guess the broad side. These will act like the ribs of a ship, giving the exterior a curved surface. Normally I take care to make sure that the edges of the EVA foam pieces I cut are smooth by constantly sharpening my knife or sanding the foam smooth on a belt sander. But since these are gonna be out of sight on the inside of the suit, it really doesn't matter in this case. When I had completed a rounded skeletal frame, I traced the edge of the box onto a foam floor mat. The reason I did that is because the cardboard edge is not exactly a straight edge, so. There we go. Line that up. I cut off the excess. I weighted the floor mats down with machinist blocks so the foam doesn't slide around while I'm working. I cut those out with the work knife, which I continually sharpened in order to keep the cut clean and uniform. Now I find it. That tool specifically meant for cutting straight lines. Uh, it's not totally necessary for this build. I traced the horizontal dimensions of the box onto the inside of the floor mat. Then I used the angle cutter to cut a trench along those lines. The blades were dull, so I swapped them out. Basically, the blades of this tool are angled in the shape of a V, so they cut a perfect 90 degree groove that you can then just peel right out. Oh, so close. Great first take. Just once I like to get a good first take. There we go. Meh. No heat forming required. Then I hot glued it to the back of the box. Because hot glue and cardboard are not exactly known for their structural integrity, I also use nails, just regular old nails. I made sure to pad the other ends though with foam scraps just to prevent puncture wounds. I am the one who's gonna have to wear this after all. Because there's a little bit of stress on the folds, I weighted them down with the machinist blocks while the glue cooled. I did the same on the other side. I attempted to predict where I would have to cut holes through the cardboard in the future and tried to avoid gluing there. Then I set to work on the front panel. I'm figuring this out as I go. So for now, I'm just gonna cut away the parts that I'm absolutely sure I won't need. Although I'm thinking about what part that was and uh, yeah, I did need some of that. I don't know, like for sure I would have to have cut where I bent it. At least I would have had to have cut two darts along the bend. And it might've even been helpful to have some material to fold over. I don't know, it's kind of like Pepecura on a larger scale. Hindsight is 2020. This is sort of half planning and half sculpture. I'm trying not to take away too much, knowing that if I do, I'm gonna have to add it back. To that end, I had to cut away 20% of my work on the rib cage, as I realized that the corners and the very top were going to have to be curved inward. Really only need the corners on the back of the box. Then I sanded away some of the pattern on the back of the foam tile, just to get better adhesion when I glue. When I felt that it looked right, I contact cemented the outer panel to the rib cage. Using a paintbrush, by the way, will destroy the paintbrush. I'm only using it this time because this brush is trash. Like, I was about to throw it out and then was like, oh, you know, I can use that for contacts. One last hurrah. When the cement had become tacky, I put the two pieces together. I probably should have heat formed that a little bit because it's wanting to come back up. So I weighted it down with one, two, three bricks. They were closer than the machinist blocks. When the glue had dried fully, I cut the middle out of the panel so that I could fold it over correctly. Before folding it, I cut the corners off of the box. This will make it look even more rounded. Hey, you know what would be great for this? A box cutter? Oh yeah. You know, I'm just gonna shove that down, maybe retain a little bit of stability. Who knows? I refined these, I'm just gonna call them shoulder straps. Is that, we all go with that? Cool. Even more as I went. Okay, so now that I've got an extremely basic chest plate, I use the head to trace the neckline. If you're somehow seeing this video first, I've already built the head and arms. There'll be links to those at the end of the video. Then I glued walls around the trace line. I used machinist blocks to scoop away the excess hot glue because the, the metal will absorb the heat right away. Also, they won't burn like my fingertips will. Next, I cut strips of foam for the sides. Two strips the length of a foam floor tile are more than enough to cover the whole thing. I super glued the ends and then hot glued the rest, making sure that the seam was on the back. That's where it will be the least visible. Then I made the top of the, oh, 
What would you even call that? Horseshoe? I'm gonna call it a horseshoe. I made the top of the horseshoe out of various scrap pieces that I more or less eyeballed. I glued them on using hot glue. I had to do this in sections because this glue gun is starting to quit. Just not heating up like it used to. It's a mystery. I weighed down each section while the glue cooled. I did have to trim the ends as they cooled. Then I cut a neck hole. After that, I worked on the front. I had to cut off corners of the box so that I could fold the corners of the foam sheet inward. I heated those up a little bit so that they would bend easier and then stay bent for the most part. To fully hold them in place, I made some internal support pieces out of pink EVA foam because of what else am I going to use it for? Like, why am I saving this? I glued that inside the box and then super glued the corners to it. Now they'll stay in place. Okay, so now that I have the basic shape of the chest, I'm going to make it even more better -er by adding armor plates. I'm going to have to take some creative liberties here because being animation, a lot of times things that are supposed to be solid, such as metal armor, suddenly turn into rubber when a character has to move naturally like a person. I also referenced high resolution photos of the action figure, but discovered that the toy designers took some creative liberties as well. So I decided to split the difference between the toy and the show. I figured out the shape of the front plate using scrap cardboard and traced it onto the foam sheet. Then I cut it out. To give it more depth, I traced the sheet onto another foam tile and then repeated the process. Then I cut a bevel into the top piece with a box cutter to make it slanted because that's, that's a really jagged cut. Because that's a really jagged cut, I smoothed it out on my belt sander. You could do the whole thing on the belt sander. I'm just trying to cut down on the dust because my shop vac seems to have disappeared on me. I don't know how that happens. Ghosts. Then I glued the pieces together. After the glue had cooled, I heated up the top ends of that piece with my heat gun and then held it in a curved position so that they would conform with the horseshoe shape on top. Then I glued those on. I feel like I should mention at this point that if you have time, then contact cement is a much more durable glue, but it slows down the build process so, so much that I'm only using it when I absolutely need to on this particular build. While that glue was setting up, I built this small slanted detail at the base. There's supposed to be a little bit of an overhang, so I added a strip of EVA foam back to the side. It's a puzzle piece strip with puzzle pieces cut off. All right, building to this point took all day, so every time I have to take a break to eat or sleep, I put down filler putty on all the seams that I want to erase. I do this because it can take hours for the putty to dry, and I'm probably gonna have to do several layers. So if I time the layers just before I take a break, then I'll save on dry time in the long run. Next, I built the vent out of scrap EVA foam. What else would I make it out of? Well, there's cardboard in this building in sort of an ascending staircase formation. Then I made its frame, as well as part of the reactor window frame, out of one of the offcuts from the chest plate pieces and glued it down. And that's me doing some ridiculous shop space gymnastics to try and reach the camera all the way across the room, just out of reach. Yeah, I got it. Then I use more scraps of foam to form what are essentially collarbones, covering up the last of the visible cardboard. Well, from the front anyway. Then I cut the window for the glow from the power supply. So now that the basic structure is built, I'm going to refine it and add detail. I started by drilling holes. I traced a circle and punched it out with a flat edge razor pen attachment, then smoothed it with a rotary tool and added back one of the circles, then added a bevel for detail. Then I sat the whole thing back upright and smoothed out some of the rough edges with my rotary tool. I used a different technique for the smaller hole details, one that will hopefully cut down on sanding. I'm using a leather hole punch for this. Honestly, a lot of leather working tools and techniques are applicable to foam smithing. Contact cement is actually meant for shoes. So I guess it's nice to know that if this whole YouTube thing doesn't work out, I can always become a cobbler. I drilled a hole for the antenna. To get the offcut out of the horseshoe structure, I used these forceps, which come in handy surprisingly often. Such a relief. I did not want to have to listen to that rattling around whenever I wear this. Then for the handles, I made those out of EVA foam dowels by chopping out a 90 degree notch in either end in order to create a 90 degree bend. I super glued those in place. Gonna hold off on the details that go on the top of the horseshoe because they'll get in the way while I'm working on the details on the other sides. Those details include more armor panels on the lower sides. Those stick out a lot, and I don't want to have to work on this while it's propped up on stilts. So before I do any more work on the chest, I'm going to make the belt, the Mecha UFC Championship belt, which I'll be making out of four foam strips glued onto two wider strips cut from a foam tile and glued together. I heated those up with a heat gun and then placed them inside a tube so that they would hold on to a curved shape as they cooled. When 
they cooled. I glued them together. Then I glued the thin strips on top of that. Oh, uh, make sure you balance this in a bike helmet, by the way. Otherwise, won't work. That is your only option. Did I tell you guys I bought a bike helmet? Now all I need is a bike. The belt buckle consists of four vertical strips. There's also a handle on one of the horizontal strips. I'm guessing from the placement of the handlebars that they're actually meant to be a ladder so that skinny Steve can climb up into it. So I think that in the show, Steve is not like in the limbs of it at all. He's sitting in a cockpit in the chest. But scale is a huge issue for the Hydra Stomper. I think when Tony's first working on it, it's like three stories high. And then when we see it first in action, it's like two stories high. And then during the air battle, it's one and a half stories. And then in the final battle, it's back up to three stories. At any rate, even if I built it to skinny Steve scale, I would not be able to puppeteer that. So I'm just doing it as like a suit of armor and I'll scale it up and post. I had to add a shim in the back in order to make it wide enough. Then I glued it onto the bottom of the chest and slowly glued the excess material from the armor plates to the inside of the belt in order to strengthen the connection. Because they want to pull apart, I temporarily gator clamped them in place while they dry. Then I cut arm holes. I cut a center hole, which will have to be refined so that I can fit it in there. Then I drilled holes in the side panels and added rivets that I made out of resin. Although you can make your own using off-cut foam circles from pipe drilling. Then there's one more panel that I need to attach, well, two identical panels between the front and the sides. I made it out of four millimeter craft foam, those $1 sheets. Then I made hinge details. I'm not sure if that's actually what they are, but that's what they look like to me. Finally, I made the details that go on top. These include more handlebars and an antenna. I'm actually not gonna glue the antenna in. It's snug enough that it'll stay in there as a tension fit, and I know that I'll need to take this apart in order to bring it to conventions. And that's how I built the body of my Hydra Stomper costume. I'm gonna hold off on the paint job until I finish all the pieces, because the painting process really takes a couple weeks to do correctly. I rushed the paint job on the arms, and it ended up costing me way more time in the end just going back and fixing my mistakes. So, trying to avoid that this time around. Oh, on that note, if you're seeing this video before the other Hydra Stomper builds, here's a link to the helmet and the arms. This video is brought to you by my patrons, those are the names scrolling by right now. I want to shout out Gabe for increasing his pledge, as well as Jazzman Lucas the Good Captain, Montana Reese, and Duba Derp. Great name. Thanks for making me say that. Who came on board from the previous Hydra Stomper builds and helped fast track this one. And if you'd like to join them, it would go a long way towards finishing the whole Hydra Stomper suit because the legs are gonna be a challenge to say the least. I know the tendency is to think, well, it's gonna be exactly as difficult as the arms, but they're gonna be so much more complicated. For one, they're bigger. And two, they gotta hold up the weight of the entire costume. I need the budget just for the hardware and lumber. So thanks for supporting me. Thanks for watching. Happy crafting and see you later.